If you want to be a successful investor in the long term, index fund investing is for sure one of the best ways because you have less risks and still in the long term you most likely achieve better returns than by picking in gold stocks. In fact, every year more than half of actively managed funds fail to beat the market. For this reason, today I'm going to introduce you to everything, and I mean everything you need to know to successfully start investing in index funds, including how to actually open an account and start investing. So what are index funds? What is the difference with mutual funds or with ETFs? And why are they better than investing in single stocks? When you invest in a stock market, you can choose to buy shares of specific companies, which are pieces of ownership of that company. If I buy a share of Microsoft, which is valued now at around $415, I own a little piece of the company. So I'm officially a so-called shareholder. Problem is there are almost 4,000 companies in the American stock market. And while some of them might make you rich like Nvidia, many of them lose value and some of them even die a slow death without ever getting back on track. So index funds solve this problem for you. When you buy a share of an index fund, you're buying a package that contains several companies, usually hundreds or even thousands. There are index funds for basically everything, for different sectors, different countries, or even for crypto or for real estate. Some companies within the index will perform poorly, some better, but since you own them all, your portfolio will grow in the long term and the probability of losing your money becomes close to zero. To give an example, the index called S&P 500, which includes the 500 largest companies of the American economy, grew with an average of 9.9% since 1928 through the end of last year, and 10.26% from 1957 to today, showing positive results most of the years with just a couple of exceptions. Now, you might have heard of ETFs. So let me explain the difference with traditional index funds. First of all, ETFs are also index funds, but a particular type. ETF stands for Exchange Traded Fund. And the main difference with traditional index funds is that you can buy ETFs anytime during the day, which is an advantage if you want to buy and sell many times during the day, while index funds can be bought only once a day at the price they reach when the market closes. The main disadvantage of ETFs compared to traditional index funds is that since you can buy them and sell them during the day on the market, there is a so-called spread between the buy price and the sell price. So let's say that an ETF has a price of $100 and you have a spread of 2%. That means that if you buy it, you need to spend $101 and if you sell it, you only gain $99. The bigger the ETF, the more people are buying and selling all the time and the smaller the spread becomes. So for large ETFs, like the ones that I usually suggest in my channel, spread is not actually going to be an issue. But still, index funds, as opposed to ETFs, will always price at the net asset value without spread. So that's an advantage. A disadvantage of index funds is instead that often there is a minimum investment threshold, which can be $1,000, $3,000, in some cases even $10,000, which is the minimum value that your portfolio must have, while for ETFs, there's usually no limit. Anyway, ETFs are totally fine, and if you want an introduction to ETF investing, you can watch this video of mine that explains everything you need to know, and that also link in the description below. Mutual fund is another term you might have heard, and as opposed to index funds that passively follow an index, a mutual fund is actively managed by a fund manager who decides what to sell and what to buy within its funds. This means that one, you will pay much higher fees and two, the performance will most likely be lower than the one of the index funds because most actively managed funds fail to perform better than the market almost every year. So it's clear that index funds are for most people a better solution than stock picking because they diversify your portfolio giving you access to hundreds of companies and sectors without having to buy all the companies yourself. They're also a better solution than mutual funds because since they are passive, they have incredibly low fees and tend to perform better than actively managed funds because there is not a person with emotions involved in the selection of the companies. Now, let's see what are the best brokerage accounts and how to open one. The process of investing can be simplified into moving some money from your checking account to an investment account and buying an index fund within a couple of clicks. It's actually pretty easy. These are some of the most common brokerages or investment accounts that you can open, no matter what country you're from. For the US, the most common investment brokerages are Schwab, Fidelity, or Vanguard. If you come from the UK, Okay, you can use Trade Into One too, and from Europe, for example, Trade Republic. And if you use the link in the description below, you're gonna get a free stock with a value between five euros and 100 euros by signing up. Just so you know, if you come from Europe, you're gonna be buying ETFs, which as I said, are completely okay and are indeed index funds, with the difference that they can be bought and sold anytime during the day. Now, depending on the country you live in, with these brokers, you're gonna be able to open a normal investing account or also tax-advantaged accounts. For example, if you live in the US, you should absolutely 
recently opened a so-called Roth IRA, which is an investing account that makes your investments grow tax-free and you can withdraw them tax-free if you wait until you are 59 years and a half of age. Another interesting account in the US is the 401k, which is a workplace retirement plan that lets you invest annual contributions up to a certain limit and the employer also matches your contribution up to 100%. In other countries, you may find similar conditions. For example, an equivalent of the Roth IRA in the UK is the ISA, in Canada, TFSA, and Super in Australia. Now, to be more practical, let me guide you through opening an account with Vanguard through the website and Weibull through the app. On Vanguard's personal investor homepage, you need to select Open an account. Assuming you're gonna be using your bank to make your initial investment, you'd select the first choice. After clicking Sign Up on the I'm new to Vanguard option, you're shown an overview of the next steps and the whole process of opening an account will take you five to 10 minutes. Then you need to select the type of account you want. The first is the IRA, like a traditional IRA or the Roth IRA. And the second is a normal investing account. You're gonna be asked for the typical information like address, phone, and so on. And remember that investment accounts are like banks, so they need to ask you this information just like a bank would. Some questions might seem inappropriate to you, like info about your employment, income, and net worth, but they have to do it just because it's required by law. Once your account has been accepted within three to seven days and your money reaches in your account, you can start investing and you're going to be able to buy ETFs, index funds, stocks, and much more. Here's a list of ETFs from Vanguard, but don't freak out. I'll explain later how to choose the best ETFs and which are the ones you should focus on. Vanguard does also have an app, but to show you how to set up a brokerage from your phone, I'm going to use Weibo. By the way, the process of creating an account and buying ETFs is the same for all brokers. So if you know how to do it with one, you're going to be able to manage with any broker. First thing you do is download and open a Weibo app on your phone. Click on Open Account, look located at the bottom of the screen, and then you have to identify using an ID. Step two is filling in your personal information just as they appear in your ID, and then your employment information, just like we've seen from Vanguard. You then answer some questions about your investment objectives, your finances, and you confirm. The next step is to choose your account type. Choose cash account, because right now you don't want to deal with margins, and choose stocks and ETFs as securities. Webull usually requires 24 hours to review your application, and then you're going to be ready to go. Now I want to give you 10 of the best index funds that you can find if you want to start an index fund portfolio. But before this, if you enjoyed this content so far, consider subscribing to the channel and drop a beautiful like to this video to help me out with the YouTube algorithm. It's a small gesture, but it helps my channel a lot. And I'm sure you'll find interesting information on my channel, so just check it out. All right, I'm going to put a list of the top 10 index funds that I personally think are great if you're starting an index fund portfolio. Obviously, you don't need to buy all of them. Most people use one, two, or three of them because they're all pretty generic market index funds with great diversification. Now, the first two are just two versions of the S&P 500 index, namely a collection of the 500 best and largest companies of the US economy. The abbreviation you see is called ticker, and it's like a unique code that you use to identify the index fund. If instead of the index fund, you want the ETF version for Vanguard, it's gonna be VOO for the US, or VUAA for Europe. If you are from Europe though, I suggest you just write the whole name like you look for Vanguard S&P 500 in your brokerage app instead of writing VUAA because depending on the country and the market, the ticker changes. After the S&P 500, I'm gonna give you FNILX, the Fidelity Zero Large Cap Index Fund. This is a really interesting fund because it's similar to the S&P 500, even in performance, but has zero fees. Then we have the total stock market with VTSAX, which has a really similar performance to the S&P 500, but includes all 3,750 companies of the stock market. So it's gonna give you even more diversification. Usually, even just buying the S&P 500 or the total stock market market, in the long term, you're going to have a better performance than 80% of investors. So you might even want to stop there. Then you find a growth index fund and a value index fund. Growth represents companies that invest aggressively into their growth, while value are usually more mature companies that tend to invest less in growth and distribute their earnings back to the shareholders through dividends. Then I'm giving you VBTLX, which is a total bond market from Vanguard, and then a couple of others. Now let's see how to find index funds in the Vanguard website and how to choose the best ones. And by the way, with other firms like Fidelity or Schwab, it's gonna be the same thing. So if you Google Vanguard index fund list, you get here in the list of mutual funds. And as you can see on the left, you have different filters you can use for example, the first important thing to do is we want index funds and not actively managed funds. So you go to management style and you choose index. All right, on the right side, you can turn on the detail view. 
so that we get a little bit more information about the funds. The important information is the so-called expense ratio, which is the amount of your portfolio that you're going to pay every year as fee. And usually, good index funds like the S&P 500 or the total stock market have an expense ratio that is lower than 0.1%. And you can see the performance in different timeframes and the investment minimum that you need to start investing in an index fund. Usually, when investing in index funds, I suggest you go for the most common ones, like the one I listed before. If you invest in ETFs instead, which by the way is what I do and what I mostly talk about in my channel, there are many tools online that help you find the best ones. And to learn more about how to do this, you can watch this video of mine where I set up a free ETF screener and teach you what are the most important things to look for when choosing ETFs. Another important thing to know is the concept of fund overlap. Since index funds and ETFs are baskets of different stocks, if you buy more than one ETF, it might happen that they have overlapping positions. This is not necessarily a bad thing. For example, you can have a total stock market index fund that has all the companies, and then you want to have more weight on a particular sector, and you buy an index fund of that sector. In this case, obviously, the second index fund is going to have a huge overlap with the total stock market, but you're doing it with a purpose. If you go to a website called etfrc.com and click on ETF Tools Fund Overlap, you get on a page where you can insert two ETFs and check the overlap. By the way, I've never found a tool that checks the overlap between index funds only between ETFs. So if you know one, just let us know in the comment section below. Another concept I want to briefly introduce to you is fractional shares. When you look for an ETF or a stock to buy in your investment account, you're going to find the so-called unit price, the price of a single unit. For example, the S&P 500 ETF from Vanguard is trading now at around $450. Now, let me make it easy. This price has absolutely no meaning for you because since a couple of years ago, we have the options to buy the so-called fractional shares. So instead of buying a whole unit for the market price, in this case for $150, you can buy a small portion of it for like $1. Now, a question I get asked a lot of times is how much do you actually invest? The answer depends on your income and your final goal, but to help you define how much you need to invest, I prepared a Google table which I'm going to make available to you for free through the link in the description below. This table tells you how your portfolio is going to grow depending on how much you invest and for how long. For example, let's say you start with an initial capital of $0, and you want to invest in the S&P 500 that, as I said, for the last 100 years, gave an average annual return of 10%. Now, this is where it gets interesting, because by writing how much you're going to invest every month, you can see how much your wealth grows every future year. For example, if you invest $500 every month, after 10 years, you're going to have $102,000. After 20 years, $379,000. After 40 years, over 3 million. And this, having only invested $240,000 in a lifetime. You can download the file for free by scanning this QR code or by the link in the description below. And if you're kind and want to do something nice today, drop a beautiful like to this video for the YouTube algorithm. The last question I want to answer and that people always ask is, when should I start? To answer this, I'm going to show you a really interesting study by Schwab from September 2023. The research studied the performance of five hypothetical long-term investors following different investment strategies. Each received $2,000 at the beginning of every year for the 20 years ending in 2022 and invested the money in the S&P 500. Peter Perfect was a perfect market timer and was able to place his $2,000 into the market every year at the lowest price of the year. The selection took a simple, consistent approach. Each year, she invested her $2,000 right away. Matthew Monthly divided his $2,000 into 12 equal portions, which he invested then at the beginning of each month using the dollar cost averaging method. Rosie Rotten had incredibly poor timing. She invested her $2,000 each year at the worst, most expensive moment of the year. Larry Linger, well, Larry left his money in cash. He was convinced that it was better to wait for the next crash before investing, so he ended up never investing his money. And here's the wealth of our five friends after 20 years. There are many conclusions you can draw from this, but the most interesting one is that even Rosie Rotten, which always invested in the worst moment of the year, ended up with double as much money as Larry, which which did invest at all. And the difference with Peter, which always invested in the best moment of the year, isn't even so big. In case you're more interested in ETFs, you can watch my full guide for beginners here, or anyway, you're gonna find tons of interesting material in my channel because I focus on ETFs. If this video was helpful, consider subscribing to the channel to stay tuned on future videos and drop a beautiful like to this video. So thank you so much for watching this, guys. I wish you a wonderful evening, and as always, I'll see you in the next video. Ciao.